Hey, hey, welcome back to the Your Pretty Pennies YouTube channel. I'm Tara Jones Williamson, financial and lifestyle success coach. And today we are smack dab in the middle of the wedding on a budget series that I am doing for my ladies here in the YPP community. Um, if you are new to me, welcome. Make sure you subscribe. I am Tara Jones Williamson, like I said, and I just got married back in February of 2020. Um, and we were engaged in August 20. 2019. So in about six months, we put together, my husband and I, the wedding of our dreams on about $5,500. And so if you are interested in how we did that, please make sure to watch videos one through four. We've already covered wedding visioning and mindset and how to manage the stress of it all in the budget and how to choose your bridesmaids and you know premarital counseling and what we did before we started to get married and what we talked about and all those other good things. All right, so make sure that you do not miss a video. Go back after you watch this video, watch the other ones. Um, and also make sure you click the link in the description box for the checklist and the worksheets that go along with this video series. It's absolutely free, free of charge, and it pairs really well so you can have something to print off and check off. I'm, I'm a checker offer and a highlighter. So I want to create something for you to do the same as you start creating and manifesting the wedding of your dreams and the budget that is right for you, all right? Today we're talking about shopping for wedding dress and accessories. This was my favorite thing to do, one of the favorite things to do um, during my wedding planning process was going to the, you know, to the bridal shops and the stores and looking online and seeing what type of dress I want, trying on different things because before, you know, I got married and I got engaged, I never really ever tried on a wedding gown. I don't know when I would have, but so I didn't know what silhouette I would like or anything. So to me, this was very fun. All right, so let's give you some tips on what I did in order to make sure that this this item in my budget was very minimal, all right? So like I said in my budget video, um, my dress and veil was a gift to me, all right? So going back to what we talked about there, the first step into making sure you pay either a low amount of money for your dress or no amount of money for your dress to where it's not even in your wedding budget um, is to ask for it as a gift from one of your family members or friends or whatever. So this is key, again, if you are very, if you don't mind having your gifts given to you on the front end versus the back end, right? Typically, individuals will pay all this money for their wedding and all the wedding expenses that they incur and then the wedding happens and then they go home and they have a bunch of cards with money in it and gifts, you know, to open and things like that. We did it the opposite way. We did still come out with a lot of money and a lot of gifts in the back end. However, from my immediate family, instead of waiting for them to get us something off our wedding registry, I straight up went to them and said, hey dad, hey mom, hey mom-in-law, hey dad-in-law, hey cousin, uncle, auntie, grandma, grandpa, whoever it is that your key contributors are, um, I went up to them and was like, hey, these are the things that we absolutely need for our wedding. How about instead of buying us a wedding gift or giving us money for something, how about you purchase this? And so one of the gifts from my mother to, to our wedding was my wedding dress and my wedding veil, all right? And so for us, out of that $5,500, that wedding dress was not included. If you are not, if that will not be the case for you, here are some unexpensive, here's are some ways to get an inexpensive yet beautiful wedding gown. Number one, consignment shops. Says, first of all, every dress or shirt or uh, jumpsuit that I have on during this series or in any of my videos, I can guarantee you it has been thrifted. Now, I might have still have the tags on it when I thrifted it or it might have been gently used or maybe worn once or whatever the case is. But I love thrift shops and consignment shops, sis. And actually, this was the first thing that I did before I even asked my mom about, you know, doing my wedding gown and veil was I was like, okay, if, if I'm just in backup, even if she doesn't say yes at our meeting, our first financial meeting, if she does not say yes, 
what can I do to make sure I get an inexpensive dress that's beautiful, that's luxury, that's high quality? You know, what can I do? And I went back to my roots. Girl, I love thrifting and I love consignment shopping. And so there are consignment shops specifically for dresses and um, gowns, wedding gowns and wedding dresses. Sis, get the digging, right? I love the thrill of the hunt and so that was going to be my first thought and my first mind because I actually wanted a vintage dress but I couldn't find one so my mom and I we actually went to a bridal shop and we found and my sister and my my bridesmaids and we found the wedding dress of my dreams right I'm not going to disclose how much it was it was a nice little amount but it was a gift so you know I really didn't have a cap it was a gift from my mom but consignment shops thrift stores Poshmark outlets bridal store outlets all these different places you can get a really great gown remember you only wearing it one day it's for a party it's for you to come out and walk down the aisle during a party remember your wedding gown does not equal the level of how much you spend on your wedding gown does not equal the level of success you're gonna have in your marriage and I don't know about you I'd rather have a great marriage that's financially stable than to have a beautiful gown that I wear one day and be struggling on the back end as I'm trying to blend my family family and you know come together with my husband you know no thank you right and so I love consignment shops thrift shops Poshmark which is online and also bridal outlets in your area when I went to the bridal shop so I went to Becker's Bridal in Fowler Michigan um, which is about an hour away from us they do have the main room like the main area and the main shop but then they also have an outlet we went to the main shop and actually my dress was off what they call the rack which means it wasn't something that they had to order or wasn't something custom or anything like that that kept the cost low as well and basically we bought it a few sizes up because the way the dimensions of my body are my body is listen and you can even tell in my wedding video which is linked below you can even tell that there was a lot of alteration because I'm small up here in my bust, even in my waist, I'm small and then my hips get wider. And so um, you have to be careful if you are like me where you go, you're like thin, skinny and then you're like this, right? You're like very curvy. Um, some dresses, not every dress is created equal and not every dress is created for curvy women. I learned that the hard way with my dress. That dress was beautiful. I loved it. It was great. However, you can tell like even when it kept getting altered down, down, down to fit my bust area. Um, number one, the dress was heavy. So if you have a strapless dress, you got to constantly lift it up. No one ever told me that. Like if you got a sweetheart neckline and a strapless, because the dress was like had heavy beading and lace and ruffles and everything else was a heavy dress. It kept like drooping down. So I had to kind of keep pulling it up all day, all night. But uh, the other thing is, is that be careful of the materials and fabrics. Because even if you get it altered to your body, it still will show these lines in the front because it's still trying to stretch and it's hard to sit down in. If it was up to me, I should have got something that had a little bit more stretch in it. I don't even know if they make dresses like that, but I love that dress and the silhouette of it and the way it looks, so I kept it anyway, and it worked out great, but um, just remember that if you're a curvy woman. That was just a little tip for me, from me, but I ended up getting my dress off the rack and got it altered, got it a few sizes too big, got it shaped to my body, and it was perfect. And so if you are getting a dress in consignment or if you're ordering online from somebody else or if you um, are getting it um, at an outlet or whatever, always get it a few sizes bigger because if you gain weight, you cannot alter your dress to go up in, in size with you. You can always alter it to go down. So for me, my weight, so again, I got married in August. I got engaged in August. We got married in February. So therefore, I had to go through the Thanksgiving season and Christmas season, and my winter weight was at its highest around that time. So when I bought my dress, I started to go into my winter weight, which it peaks in November and December, and then it drops back down by the time February comes. And so for me, getting my dress altered was a very fun process because I had to keep going back because I kept losing weight. I wasn't even trying to necessarily lose weight because I like the way my body is right now. So it's not like I'm like rigorously trying to lose weight for my wedding. I don't even suggest that. Girl, this is your wedding day. Your husband wants you just the way you are. I never once 
told myself I had to lose weight in order to fit into my dress. Listen, this dress about to get whatever body I give it. This husband of mine about to get whatever body I give him, right? Like, I'm not stressing out on my wedding season. Like, that's crazy to me how women do that. But anyway, um, and you don't do that. Like, you are beautiful just the way you are. If you want to lose weight for health reasons, for whatever reason, that's one thing. But don't say, oh, I got to lose 10 pounds so I can fit into my dress. No, 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 no. Because that just added more stress to you. Like, girl, no. We ain't doing that. Make sure you go up in size because then you can get it altered down, long story short. Um, and I went through three rounds of alterations due to my body type. And even on the day of my wedding, my, my dress was still a little bit big. It was weird, but anyway, whatever. Next, spend up on your dress if you desire, but low on accessories. So let's say, for example, you see there's a bomb dress. You like, you know what? The dress is high on my priority list. I'm not going to find this dress nowhere else. This dress is going into my budget and it costs a little bit more than what I would like, but I'm getting it. That's great. That means you have a high quality dress, a beautiful dress. Guess what? You can go and, and do low on your accessories, spend less on your accessories because the elegance and the quality of your dress is going to enhance all the accessories that you buy. So my shoes came off of Poshmark. I had some Bagley Mishka shoes, wedding shoes that were gorgeous. And again, you can see them in my wedding video and also on my Instagram at Your Pretty Pennies. Um, they were only worn once before I bought them. A woman wore them for her wedding. I bought them for $75. They were originally $300 wedding shoes. I bought them for $75 and yes, they are flats. Sis, this is your wedding day and this is the party. Unless you are used to wearing heels all day long, ditch the heels. Because you can't even see them under your dress. No way. Unless you have a dress, a short dress, and you're doing it something different. And you want to do a sexy reception dress or something like that to where you can see your shoes or your heels. Okay, do it that way. But if you got a long gown, girl, ain't no need to be putting on no heels. Like, it's 2020. Girl, they make way too many cute flat shoes with, with bedazzlements and glitter and jewelry and jewels and different fun colors. You do not need to be wearing no heels, girl. Don't even do that to yourself. Pay $75 for my shoes. My jewelry and hair accessories all together was less than $50. Again, check out my wedding video and also my Instagram where I'm posting different pictures from my wedding day. Girl, my, my jewelry piece was very cute. Head piece was very cute. The little clips. I loved my earrings. My necklace was borrowed. It was from my mother-in-law. So think about something borrowed and things you can borrow. Even with your veil. Try to borrow your veil. Try to borrow your jewelry. So those are not line items in your budget. Because I wanted a winter romantic cozy wedding, I did a fur shawl. It was a faux fur shawl that I got for $54 off of Amazon. And I had a garter, two-piece garter set under my dress that was blue, $17, right? I was not breaking the bank when it came to my accessories. I do not need high-end, top-of-the-line white gold jewelry that I'm wearing one day. I don't even like wearing big jewelry like that. And I loved everything about the way I looked on the, my wedding day, all right? And some people are even ditching the veil. If you don't even feel like you're a veil girl, like, no harm, no foul. Like, you don't even have to wear a veil. Like, girl, don't even, don't even spend anything on something that you really are not passionate about on the day of your wedding, all right? When it comes to dress alterations, don't go cheap. Go to places that specialize in bridal alteration so wherever you go it should say for mine was tammy's or was it connie's it was tammy's tammy's bridal alterations it didn't say sue alterations or shell and cleaners that may be able to alter dresses no i went to a place that's reputable that i've gotten referrals from my best friend charla she got her dress altered at Connie knows Tammy's bridal and alterations and so that's where I went. Do not skimp 
on your alterations because girl if somebody mess up your dress yes you could probably sue them yes you could probably get your money back but you don't want the stress and hassle of potentially having to go find another dress last minute hurry up and go through alterations what if you really don't even like the dress more than you like the one that people have screwed up like you just don't want to take that risk right so you just want to do you know put the money in your budget to make sure that you do your alterations for all my alterations i spent four hundred dollars that was it four hundred dollars for my dress alterations and i had to do three rounds um like i said your veil can be purchased or used um as something borrowed um i would have absolutely borrowed somebody's veil my mom wanted to buy my veil and that was fine along with my dress and it actually matched my dress and it was beautiful but i absolutely would have borrowed it or not use it if i have to pay for it out of pocket i probably wouldn't even bought a veil um your jewelry can be sentimental and borrowed again i wore my mother-in-law's necklace that was so beautiful i loved it. it was like a piece of her on me and then my mother she's the one that placed it on me and then my mother-in-law and my mother they're the one that put on my wedding veil on the day of my wedding and it was very beautiful didn't cost a lot right all right so if you have any other questions about your wedding gown and your wedding accessories for you day of let me know in the comments otherwise make sure you hit that description box to get these links sis watch our wedding video why uh download your checklist so you can start planning the wedding of your dreams on a budget thank you so much today for watching make sure you share this video and subscribe on your way out and i will talk to you later Bye bye